He jumped up, grabbed his hat and boots, and headed for the door. I just hope they haven't gotten a horse. As he ran out of the house onto the porch, a hand reached out and grabbed him. The hand pulled hard on his shoulder and spun him around. Dropping his boots and hat, Dusty stepped back and made a fist. The Adventures of Cowboy Bill and the Triple Cross Cowboys. Yes, join us now for stories of the Old West and the most famous Christian cowboy of them all, Cowboy Bill. With a Bible in his pocket and pistol in hand, Cowboy Bill brought truth, honesty, humor, and the gospel to the Old West. Return with us to those days of old and ride with Cowboy Bill. Cowboy Bill and Dusty Trails rode a fast pace. Heavy two devils called old Clyde Mason's place. Dusty Trails is nervous, he don't like what's been said. About Clyde Mason's go scared, they'll both end up dead. William Travis James, also known as Cowboy Bill, foreman of the Triple Cross Ranch and his sidekick, Dusty Trails, pulled their horses to a stop on the rim above the valley. It was just at sunset. Well, there it is. Clyde Mason's Double Cauldron Ranch, or what's left of it. Cowboy Bill, is this the place that... Yep, this is the place. But we're going to see what really happened here. Let's ride on down to the house. But, Cowboy Bill, people all say this place is haunted. It's a ghost ranch. There are ghosts and... Dusty Trails. There are no such thing as ghosts. Come on, you'll see. As the two men entered the ranch gate, they could see the front door on the house swinging open and closed. Large cobwebs filled the windows on the first and second floor, and the setting sun gave a reddish cast to the eerie scene. The large barn behind the house had several broken windows, and the barn door stood wide open. This place is sure run down since the last time I was here. And that's only been about a year and a half ago. <laughs> well, that's because ghosts and spooks don't take very good care of a place. Dusty, stop that kind of talk. Oh, no, I mean it. You say what you will, but, but, but I know the stories of how old man Mason just up and disappeared. Rode out one day just nice as you please, and, and then this horse came in with no rider. And when they followed his trails back to where he came from, there was no sign of Mason. He just vanished. And ever since then, there have been strange stories and sightings around here. That's why nobody comes here. It's haunted by Mason's ghost, I tell you. That's ridiculous. Now, there are no such thing as ghosts, but, but that's why we're here. The insurance company sent us out to find out what really happened here. So we'll bed down here tonight and start our search in the morning. Here? Here. Oh, Cowboy Bill, you can't mean it. Oh, I sure do. Now let's get our bedrolls inside and get our horses taken care of. Inside? Like, like in the house? Well, sure. Don't tell me you're afraid. Oh, no. I won't tell you I'm afraid. I always shake like this. The two men went inside, prepared a quick supper, and decided to turn in and get an early start in the morning. The full moon cast strange shadows as puffy clouds floated past in front of the moon's light. Outside, an old owl hooted in the quiet night. Each hoot made Dusty sit up straight. On the hill, a coyote howled his mournful song. Then around midnight, Dusty Trails was awakened by what sounded like a voice in the room at the top of the stairs. As he carefully lifted his head to look, he saw a strange light dancing off the walls upstairs. First here, then there, it seemed to go off and off. And he couldn't hear any footsteps, and yet the light kept moving. Then he heard the voice again. Was it a human? He just couldn't be sure. He slowly reached for his six-shooter beside his bedroll. In the dark, he couldn't find it. It seemed like it was gone. Oh, my gosh. They got my gun. Dusty pulled the bedroll over his head and waited. All of a sudden, it seemed deadly. 
There was no sound anymore. As he carefully peered out from his bedroll, he saw the dancing light was gone. He waited and listened. As he looked around, his eyes saw the light again. This time, it seemed to be in the barn. Then he heard a loud crash, and the light disappeared. He sat straight up and felt again for his rifle this time. It wasn't there. I'm doomed. Then, suddenly, the light reappeared. This time, it came from the loft in the barn. Cowboy Bill, wake up. Mason's ghost is here. I saw him. Suddenly, the light went out. There was no answer. He looked over where Cowboy Bill was sleeping. But to his surprise, he saw Cowboy Bill was not in his bedroll. Oh, no. They got Cowboy Bill, too. I'm getting out of here before they get me. He jumped up, grabbed his hat and boots, and headed for the door. I just hope they haven't gotten a horse. As he ran out of the house onto the porch, a hand reached out and grabbed him. The hand pulled hard on his shoulder and spun him around. Dropping his boots and hat, Dusty stepped back and made a fist. Ain't no ghost gonna get me. Dusty swung at the figure in the dark. Then a cool, quiet voice said, Dusty, hold it, it's me. What? Who? (laughs) I know who you are. You're old man Mason's ghost. You got Cowboy Bill, but you ain't gonna get me. Dusty swung again, and this time Cowboy Bill grabbed him by the hand. Dusty, stop! It's me, Bill! What? Who? Cowboy Bill? (laughs) Just relax, old timer. Everything is okay. But the light, the the noise, I thought... (laughs) Oh, that was just me. I was looking for clues in the barn and tripped over some old tack and and the light went out. Just you? No ghost? (laughs) Just me. I told you there was no reason to fear. Oh, Cowboy Bill. I'm so relieved. I I thought, well, then I've got just one more question. Sure, old timer, what is it? Where's the outhouse? I need it. (laughs) And now, boys and girls, let's spend a few minutes with Cowboy Bill himself. Well, howdy, buckaroos and buckarettes. This is Cowboy Bill. Wasn't that an exciting story we just heard about Cowboy Bill and Dusty Trails? Dusty Trails certainly was scared of what he thought was a ghost, wasn't he? And as it turned out, there was no ghost. He was afraid of something, but what? I want to talk to you just a minute about fear and being afraid. You know, we're almost all afraid of something at some point in time, even grown-ups. The thing that we're often afraid of is something we don't know or something we don't understand. And we have to wonder what or who. The exciting thing is we are never really alone and don't have to be afraid. God is always there to guide us through the things that are kind of scary. And we can always turn to Him when we have a fear of something. You know, in your Bible over in the book of Psalms, there's a very special verse I want to share with you. It's Psalm 56, verse 3, and it says, When I am afraid, I will trust in you. And that reminds me of a story, a story in the book, a story in the book called Mark. It's a story of Jesus calming a storm. Jesus and the disciples were in a boat and the storm came up and they were very afraid. But Jesus stood up and told the storm to stop and it did. Jesus calmed the storm and told the disciples they didn't need to be afraid. So just like in the middle of the storm with the disciples, if we're afraid, Jesus is always there. All we have to do is turn to him and ask him to help us with our fears. Won't you do that? Tonight when you say your prayer, just say, Jesus, thank you for helping me when I'm afraid. See you next time.